Amazon forest live some of the most famous assassins of all. This is a three-dimensional ecosystem. The thin outer branches are reasonably safe, but there is sun and wind, and the food is down below. Down there where the shadows have eyes, where sight is unimportant and everyone is in fact listening. On each branch awaits a feast, or death. Everyone wants energy their bodies can use. Predation means catching with violence, the only language that evolution has taught the felines like this one. Of all the eyes on its body, only two can see. Remaining absolutely silent, it waits for something to make a mistake, a slight, subtle rustle which will betray the presence of potential prey. The Siguana chose the wrong moment to wake from its sleep. The eyes of fear have found him, but he still hopes to remain unnoticed, camouflaged against the ground. Too close. This hunter is an ocelot, but it could be any of the dozens of species of highly specialized predators that live on Earth. Their numbers are insignificant compared to those of their prey, but nonetheless their role in evolution is vital because it is they who decide who will live and who will die. We humans still have one foot in our biological past and the other in our cultural present. As man evolved as a hunter, he gained free hands to create tools. This led to an increasingly large brain, finally making possible the appearance of language. Then, like these huranias in the jungles of Ecuador, we were capable not only of inventing darts and blowpipes, but also of coating them with poisons obtained from nature. Thanks to speech, hunters could tell each other where the prey was, could describe the landscapes, and what is more important, they could discuss the many different hunting possibilities. Our hands developed in order to grab onto the branches, and our stereoscopic vision arose from the need to measure the distance between one trunk and another. But for some reason, we decided to come down to the ground. And when we adopted an erect stance, our hands could be used to manipulate objects. It was then that we became cultural animals. And that happened here, in Africa. These are Bushmen, they have been here in the Kalahari Desert for at least 6,000 years. In the same way as the Hurani Indians, they are preparing the poison with which they will smear their arrows. The same purpose, but using different ingredients. The fluids of the larva of a beetle, saliva, camungarunga seed and sansavieria root. A mixture capable of felling anew with even a superficial graze. Throughout the world, Homo sapiens found a way to kill more and better, which made him the perfect predator. Now the animals he once shared the trees with have become his prey, his source of energy. Man hunts in large groups in a coordinated manner, with a vast knowledge of the behavior of other animals. The young Waurani learns from his elders, observes and trains, sharing their experience.
Not even the ocelot could catch a monkey high up in the trees, but the Huarani's blowpipes can launch the poison up into the very highest branches. And what is more, they are silent. So if one hunter fails, the master, the cultural predator, can still shoot. In just a few minutes, the poison takes effect in the monkey's body, and man once more climbs up into the branches, but this time to claim the reward for so many thousands of years of evolution. Cooperative hunting brought with it other consequences. The impulse to kill became dissociated from the impulse to eat when the food had to be transported to a home base. Then groups of males took over the task of getting meat for the family unit. Sharing the journey, risks and strategies forged loyalty among them. The Huauranes still believe that when they return home, the prey belonged to their wives.